Luhan v. Defenders of Wildlife is such an important case because it announced for the first time that Justice Scalia would have an outsized influence on environmental law. Uh, Scalia had been confirmed on the court just six years earlier, and his views on environmental law were never mentioned or even discussed. But in 1992, we learned uh, this was a justice who had a very, very uh, significant view. So the case arose under the Federal Endangered Species Act, a law passed by Congress in 1973. And in the case, the Defenders of Wildlife was suing the Department of the Interior because the federal agency had concluded that the Endangered Species Act didn't apply to activities of the federal government overseas, outside the U.S. borders. And there were members of the Defenders of Wildlife who were very worried about some federally funded activities um, in Egypt, uh, which might endanger uh, the continued existence of the Nile crocodile, uh, and Sri Lanka uh, that would jeopardize the endangered species uh, of the Asian elephant uh, or the snow leopard. The DC Circuit in this case had concluded the Defenders of Wildlife's members had what's called Article III standing, and to have Article III standing, you have to show that you have an injury in fact. That you're injured uh, by the government's action, the government's action caused your injury, and the court can provide redress uh, that will address the injury you've had. That was then the case was brought before the United States Supreme Court. So in the Supreme Court, we really had two issues. There was first whether Defenders of Wildlife and its members had Article III standing to bring the case at all in federal court. The second issue in the case, uh, which had been considered sort of the big issue, and that is whether the Endangered Species Act applies extraterritorially, the Supreme Court never reached that second issue. The court basically tossed the case out for lack of Article III standing, and that was the opinion written for the court by Justice Scalia. Standing requires that the plaintiff have suffered an injury in fact a term of art which we have defined as the actual or imminent invasion of a concrete and particularized interest of the plaintiffs. His notion was you had to actually suffer immediate temporal and physically proximate injury uh, to bring a case to uh, enforce a federal environmental law. Now, in theory, that might seem sort of benign, but it's not. Because environmental statutes protect injuries which are very far flung in time and space. And so if you say the person who's bringing the suit actually actually have physical and temporal proximity to the injury, that's often going to be hard to do. During the 1970s and during most of the 1980s, the federal courts had welcomed citizen suit standing, ability of citizens to enforce federal environmental laws. It's really one of the signature features of federal environmental law is Congress concluded that you really couldn't get full enforcement of the laws, especially against the federal government itself, uh, unless you basically allowed citizens to enforce the terms of the laws. Scalia wrote an opinion for the court rejecting the citizen suit standing, and he actually mocked the idea that they were standing. It wasn't just the ruling, it was the tone of the case that was so different uh, than what we had read in judicial opinions uh, before then. We also reject respondents' novel nexus injury theories, under which anyone who either uses the same ecosystem as a threatened animal, likes to observe animals, or has a professional interest in them may sue without having to make any further showing. We do not think that a mere interest in a type of animal without more can create an injury in fact. Justice Scalia tended not to be a moderate person. He tended to swing for the fences. And sometimes he alienated some of his colleagues. Well, he swung a little far in Lujan. And while he had a majority for most of the opinion, he lost Kennedy for part of it. He lost Souter for part of it, and he, even more forebodingly, he lost Justice O'Connor entirely. Justice O'Connor, a moderate conservative, dissented. She joined Justice Waxman's dissent, which accused Justice Scalia's majority opinion of having engaged in a slash and burn expedition through the environmental law of standing. Now, the immediate impact of the ruling was to basically uh, reduce environmental citizen standing throughout the United States. A lot of lower court judges threw out environmental citizen suits, particularly in Clean Water Act cases, which are the bread and butter of a lot of environmental citizen suits, saying that the basic problem with those cases was the plaintiffs hadn't shown that this particular water pollution would actually cause them some kind of immediate physical harm.
Pharma plaintiffs realized if they could get a better case with better facts, they could well break apart Justice Scalia's majority coalition in Lujan, and they did just that. And they won, and they won big. <laughs> they won seven to two, and Justice Scalia found himself in dissent. And Justice O'Connor, Justice Souter, Justice Kennedy, and even the Chief Justice, William Rehnquist then, joined Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's opinion that was a sweeping win for Romer Law of Standing. Now we have on the court three new justices added by President Trump. All three justices are people who have said they basically like uh, Justice Scalia's vision of the law and they like to emulate Justice Scalia. It's not yet clear what will happen uh, in environmental law of standing and whether or not we'll see a resurrection, uh, more or less, of Justice Scalia's views in the Lujan case. I love teaching uh, the Lujan case in class. The standing issue is a critical part um, of environmental law. And in this case, what I do is I show the students more than just the final opinion of the court. I have gone to the National Archives and I've taken pictures of the conference notes in the case, how the justices voted. I have copies of the draft opinions. And I see all the memos back and forth as Justice Kennedy and Justice Souter and Justice O'Connor debated with Justice Scalia and trying to get him to make compromises. So it's a case where I try to bring to life the decision-making process within the court itself and the different sort of tension points uh, in the question of Article III standing, which has proved to be ever since Justice Scalia joined the court uh, until his passing and really after 2016, uh, a really critical central issue within environmental law.